Okay, here comes the second question. It's this. Why has there been no mention of language in relation to the mind? Can a mind exist without language? Do different languages produce different states of mind? So this is an interesting question. Um, you are indeed uh, correct to say that I have not mentioned language. Um, and in particular, I have not mentioned language as being one of the fundamental ingredients of the mind. I say that the mind is made of subjectivity. The mind is, mind is made of consciousness or, or, or of sentience. Uh, the mind is made of intentionality uh, and lastly of agency. And where does language fit into all of that? Where language fits into all of it is that it isn't an essential ingredient of the mind. Language is not one of the component, the constituent elements um, of the mental. Language is an instrument of the mind. It's something that we use um, in order to do the stuff that I've just been talking about. Language is a tool, it's an instrument in much the same way as memory is a tool. Uh, and an instrument. And please note, I haven't, re I haven't mentioned memory as being a fundamental component of the mind. Um, that's because I believe that our mind uses our memory and uses our language, uh, but it isn't, con it isn't constituted by those things. Um, and perhaps the point can be uh, easier to understand if you recognize that memory, for example, or language, uh, are not, they're not specifically or they're not essentially, necessarily, mental things. Um, a computer has a language. A, a, a computer has a memory. But a computer, by my definition, doesn't have a mind. Why not? It's because it doesn't have subjectivity, it doesn't have sentience, it doesn't have intentionality, and it doesn't have agency. That's why a computer does not have a mind. Um, so you can't say that a computer doesn't have a mind because it doesn't have memory. Uh, and you can't say that a computer doesn't have a mind because it doesn't have a language. It does. It does have those two things. And uh, this speaks to the essential point that I'm trying to make. I'm trying to get to what is the nub of the mental? What is definitional? What is essential, necessary um, uh, conditions uh, for the uh, existence of a mind? The mind uses language and the mind uses memory, etc. Um, now, to approach the same question in a different way, um, the questioner in asking, do we not, how can you speak of a mind without language? Well, just think about animals. Think about your pet dog or your pet cat. Do you really believe that your dog and your cat don't have minds? Um, well, uh, I think that that's crazy. Uh, it's, it's patently obvious that they have minds. But I'm not asking you to just believe me as an act of faith. And this is also why we're doing this course. I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, disassemble or deconstruct uh, what I mean by the mind with reference to evidence uh, and and mainly with reference to evidence derived from the neurosciences. Now, I'm trying to see is there a way in which we can do natural science uh, on this thing that we call the mind, so that we can come to uh, reliable, verifiable, testable conclusions about what what kind of creature or what kind of thing does have a mind and what kind of thing doesn't. So I have already begun um, in the course to outline for you what the evidence is for my view that dogs have minds and cats have minds. And I refer you to the rest of the course for the rest of that evidence. So I'm not going to repeat it all here, but I just want to make that sort of conceptual point that I believe animals have minds, and uh, in this course I'll explain why. And that's another reason why I don't believe that language is an essential ingredient of the mind. Um, in fact, for that matter, uh, pre-verbal infants uh, clearly have minds, uh, and yet they don't uh, um, have language. They, are, they have not yet acquired language. It is not necessary to declare, I have a mind, um, in, in order to infer uh, that a creature uh, has a mental life. Um, but I know where the question is coming from. Where the question is coming from is that so much of our mental experience, us adult humans, um, so much of our mental experience is dominated by thinking. And thinking is, for the most part, coded in language. Uh, but thinking is, uh, and is specifically lang ling language uh, mediated thinking, that is to say, reflective thinking, uh, symbolic thinking. Um, this, um, is, this is a higher order 
of consciousness. It's reflecting upon your cognitions. It's thinking uh, about uh, the contents of your mind. Uh, this is what language, uh, this is the, the, the most powerful uh, 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 additional feature of the mental that language contributes. It enables us to abstract from experience and think about experience, which is an extremely important thing. It enables you to objectify yourself, to see yourself from a third person point of view, um, me in relation to others, thinking about what I'm doing rather than just concretely doing the thing, um, thinking in action. It's rather thinking about uh, actions rather, uh, that, that don't even have to actually be performed. They can be thought about in the abstract. So um, those are the main things that I wanted to say. Uh, when the question asks, you know, do we not have different types of thoughts with different types of language? Well, I'm, I'm answering this uh, firstly in the, in the general sense that, yes, you, uh, you can have a different kind of thinking um, b b when you have language, uh, because language enables you to abstract yourself. It's a re-representation. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a representation of your representations. It, it is a representing of your own thoughts. It's thinking about your thoughts. That is a, 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 a definitely a kind of thinking that's not possible um, if you don't have language or some other symbolic uh, coding scheme like language. And that is what distinguishes us from dogs and cats and all the more so from, from uh, fishes and, and lizards. You know, they just don't have uh, the, the capacity for that type uh, of mental state. But that is only a type of mental state. It is not the mental itself. And I think that we get confused uh, if we start with the human, um, very complicated, very specific type of mind, and, uh, and, and use that as our, as our um, uh, sort of uh, uh, basis for determining what the mental is. Uh, there have been minds for long, a lot longer on this planet than there have been humans. And we get misled by starting with, uh, with the, this late, complex um, form of the mind. We get misled as to what its essential ingredients are. And language, as I'm saying, is one uh, such example. It's not an essential ingredient of the mental. Uh, but the question also implies, do we not have different types of thoughts with different languages? And this refers to a theory called cognitive relativism, uh, the so-called Wolf-Sapir hypothesis. Um, which, incidentally, is out of favor these days. It's not fashionable anymore. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure why. I am quite happy to accept a very weak form of the wolf sapir hypothesis. There's certain kinds of things you can think uh, in German that you can't think in English, simply because there are words for things in German for which there are no words uh, in English. Uh, so, but this is, this is a, a, you know, it's a, I can think of a thing called um, Besetzung, uh, in, 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 in German, there's a, there's a thing called Besetzung, for which in English there are many different words, occupation, charge, um, investment, interest, filling, uh, casting. Uh, so these are a whole lot of different things, and each of those words brings different images to mind, whereas the German word Besetzung brings Besetzung to mind, and there's no one word in English that does that. So in that weak sense, yes, of course, there are certain kinds of mental content that you can have that are denoted by certain words, and if, I, if other languages don't have those words, you, then you don't have that, uh, um, that denotation, you don't have that content. But I doubt that that's really what the questioner is getting at. In terms of the fundamental point, no, language is not a necessary uh, component of the mental, although having language, language certainly complexifies the mind and enables it to do things uh, that it otherwise couldn't do. For me, the language is a tool of the mind, an instrument of the mind, um, it's a nice to have, but it is not a core component of what the mental itself consists in.